All right, guys, after we took a look at that last pistol safe, more than a dozen of you sent me some very strongly worded emails saying, you need to take a look at this Amazon Basics. It's only 57 bucks, and I think it is a bargain. And you go, you know, guys, I, I tend to agree with you after having played with this for the last week. Let's look at a little bit of the detail on this guy. First of all, the entire housing, it's not quite as aerodynamic as some of the other ones, but uh, it's very well done. One-eighth inch steel body. The gap on this, there's no jiggle between the two halves. Very tight-fitting gap all the way around it. Internally, there's an overlap that'll prevent you from sliding in and fishing around trying to pull something out. We'll take a look at that in a minute. Uh, on the back here, uh, on the hinge, the hinge is actually half recessed inside the body. So we really can't pull that pin out of there and open it up from the, the uh, hinge side. Another thing, some of you guys noted that on the last couple of safes, there were these little dimples and suggested that if we simply drilled out the dimples, you'd be able to get the, uh, the top of this to come open. It would separate. Well, I pulled the foam off from the inside of it, and at least on this safe, I think these are only for alignment. There's more than a dozen different spot well points on this hinge, so drilling out those three places will not compromise this, this uh, hinge. You won't be able to get in, into it. Again, very nice little, very nice fit on the side. And then when we take a look at the bottom of it, we also have four mounting holes and it comes with some mounting hardware. And I highly recommend you use this to mount it to a shelf so nobody can just simply carry this guy away. We take a look at the lock. The lock is inside of this plastic housing on the top. Now you might think, well, I'll just break that housing off and that'll give me access. And unfortunately, there's just a little slit that allows the ribbon cable from the electronics of the keypad to connect. It goes all the way around the top, around the back, and then along the bottom to connect to the electronic circuitry, which is located about right here. We'll take a look at that in a few minutes. Um, so breaking this off will do you absolutely no good in terms of compromising the box. Uh, you'll notice we only have four digits here, and of course this is custom programmable, anywhere from four to six digits. So do the math, figure out the number of combinations. To make things even worse, uh, if you try it five times and really get a failure, so let's go one, two, three, three. You notice it blinks red five times, telling me I have a failed combination. You got four more tries. After you try four more failures, then the electronics will lock down for five minutes. So do the math, and I think you'll be surprised how much resistance this will get. For those of you guys with bat ears, you noticed every time I pressed a button, we got a little beep noise, very high frequency. If you don't like that, and personally I don't, on this unit, you can turn it off. All you need to do is, on the number one, push it down and hold it. You hold it for about five seconds. It will blink blue one time, and that tells you that that beep sound is now off. In order to get into it, I left this on the original uh, default combination. So one, two, three, four. Notice all of these were blinking blue, telling me that the battery has more than 20% charge, plenty of life, not to worry about it. If I had been punching these and they blinked yellow instead of blue, that would tell me I got 20% or less inside of the batteries and it might be time to change those batteries. What happens if the battery dies? Well, not a big deal because down here we have a key opening. Now, unlike some of the other locks, this one is not very easy to defeat. In fact, after 45 minutes of struggling with it, I wasn't able to open it even a single time. And here's why. There's what your key looks like. So right away you can see that this guy's got six sliders. They are located on the left side. Amazon also made sure that this was a sidebar lock. So when you put a tensioner in there and you tension the core, the sidebar seizes. It doesn't put any load at all on the six sliders. So you don't get any feedback. They remain perfectly free floating, not indicating that you're anywhere near a gate or false gate or anything else. So very, very difficult to pick. As I said, after about 45 minutes, I had no success. So I'd be very happy with the quality of this lock. All right, let's go ahead and open it up and take a look at the inside. Inside, entire foam lined. It's got this little egg cray stuff to keep things from rattling around. Very nicely done. Also on the side of it, we have a lip, three, 100, or I'm sorry, 360 degrees around it. You are not going to be shimming it. There's nothing in there to shim, guys. But more importantly, it doesn't let anybody look through the side to see what you have or use a piece of wire to fish out documents 
or whatever else you might have inside of there. Up in the front here, we have a battery pack. I'll take a close look at that and the entire electronics package. Let me go ahead and change the angle of the camera. Let's take a closer look at this because I want to show you how much thought they put into this entire module right here. All right, guys, the locking mechanism cover is actually held down to the bottom with three screws. I've already taken the nuts and the washers off. But you can see one, two, three, and those screws are actually welded to the bottom of the case. So drilling them out from the bottom, again, is not going to do you a bit of good. There's the ribbon cable that comes from the electronics package all the way around the perimeter going up to the uh, electronics package that's on the keypad on the top. Uh, when we pull this off, notice even when I take the bolts out, it's very solidly attached. And that's because there are three points in the front with T-nuts that hold this on. You have to pull it straight up. So if the cover were in the lock position, this would be physically impossible. Simply not enough room. Come off of there. There we go. And when we flip it over, let's look at a couple of things here first. First of all, the battery pack cover is right here. You simply lift it up, slide it, and beneath it, you find your replaceable batteries. They come in a little housing, so you put four double A's inside of there. Pretty easy to work with and get at. On the other side here, almost invisible, is the reset switch. Reset on this is really easy. You push this button down, the lights blink blue. As soon as they start blinking, you punch in your new code, four to six digits. When you got it, you push this again, and there you, your new code is set. That's how easy it is. When we flip this over, again, we see the power wire here. Over here is the reset button. And then everything feeds into the electronics module. Let me move in, zoom in a little bit here into the electronics module. So we have power, we have reset, and then this is the electronic feed that goes from the electronics module over to what we're really interested in, that locking mechanism. Now it's a lot simpler than I thought originally. Now let's say that this is locked. That's in the locked position. There's two ways to get this open. The first one is with the key. So let's talk about exploits. Now remember, when this cover is on, there's actually the 1 8 inch steel on the outside and then the 1 8 inch steel of the inner protective covering. So you have to drill through 1 quarter inch of steel to make this happen. But it's still possible. When we turn the key, notice it takes up the slack on this little peg right here. This is actually held together with a mechanical block right there. These little teeth are engaged solidly with each other. So even if I were to somehow reach in there and try to manipulate this, there's just no way to shim it. You're not going to overcome that lock up right there. So we turn the key. He starts to pull on that little peg. He'll pull him apart and we get an unlock, which leads us to the first possible exploit. If you were to drill through the case approximately right here, all the way through the second inner case as well, you could take a probe. You could possibly reach that little peg and you can manipulate them and get an open. So that's one possibility. The other possibility lies here. Now this looks to be nothing more than a servo from a radio control aircraft. Um, I will punch in the code. Notice he has an offset actuator and he'll rotate around. And he simply triggers that same lever to unlock. Now let's lock it again. I'll do it one more time. Watch him right here very closely. Okay, pretty easy to do. All right, let's lock him up. Again, second possible exploit. If we were to drill through, drill through the top cover, right about here, and then drill also through the inner protective housing cover for that, so a quarter inch of steel, I could possibly get a probe in there and I can manipulate around and hit that same part of the lever that that little actuator from the servo hits and get an open. All right, I had to point this out because if I didn't, a lot of you guys would, but remember the spirit of this is that you're trying to keep medications or handgun away from small prying hands. This is a $57 security device, not a $5,700 safe. So yes, it's you could get into it. It's possible to breach it doing those two techniques that I show you, but it's going to be time consuming and really security devices are nothing more than speed bumps anyway, right? And that's what this thing does for 57 bucks. Well, guys, I don't know who Amazon paid to design and produce this thing for them, but I got to give them credit. They did a great job. I could find no real way to defeat this in a very short period of time. If you're looking for a way to secure your handgun or some other valuables for a, a moderate amount of time, if you're looking for a decent speed bump, I think this is definitely worth considering, especially at a price point of only $57. Uh, as always, I'm going to give this away. If you'd like to win this, stick around. I'll tell you how to do it. But I would like to say because of the weight 
and the size of this, if you live anywhere outside of the continental United States, you can still register and you can still win it, but you will pay the shipping for this one. Anyway, guys, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal. All you need to do is navigate to locklab.com, the tribal website, and scroll down in the middle of the page. You'll see all the giveaway buttons Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. But the one you're looking for is the weekend review giveaway, Purple Band. Just click on it. It'll take you to the registration page. Again, scroll to the bottom, put in a good email address. So if you win, I can get in touch with you, let you know. Put in a username, doesn't matter what it is, and click Submit. When you're done, you'll get a green check mark confirming your entry. Thanks, guys.